before the video starts, I just want to say, if you're watching this, please join my Discord. There is actually going to be giveaways here soon, so you probably don't want to miss out on those. Anyways, now for the video. Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another video, and today, I'm doing What If Naruto was the reincarnation of Hagoromo, Hamura, Indra, and Ashra. Now, how this is going to go is that... After Hamura has lived on the moon for quite a while, he entrusted his descendants on keeping Kaguya sealed and safe. And with that, Hamura and Hagoromo put their last efforts into making a new creature, a new life form. Similar to how they split up the ten tails to make nine tailed beasts, they used their chakra to make a human like creature. And about 50 years later, when it, came, when it came time for Indra and Ashra to die, they did the same thing. And so, all of that massive amount of Otsutsuki Chakra, as well as Human Chakra, went into a new life form, which resembled humans more than Otsutsuki's, though it still had some Otsutsuki features. It was to be born in about 900 years later, about 100 years before the, the Nine Tails attack, and with that, this person, who is going to be named Naruto, would then meet Hashirama as well as Madara, although he would only meet them after the founding of Konoha, since before that, Naruto lived alone in the woods, unaware of any type of civilization led by his instincts and will of survival. Then one day he stumbled into Konoha, where he met Madara and Hashirama, and was soon to become best friends, as those three were incredibly strong, though nobody, even him, even Naruto himself, nobody knew of his strength. Though Naruto would only actually gain strength after Madara had already at least officially passed away and left the village and Konoha at least for now was to live in peace where Naruto became Hashirama's right hand man due to his superior intellect for he could even keep up with the Yamanaka clan and the Nara clan he learned incredibly quickly under Hashirama himself, even learning some wood-style jutsus. And now, with all of that might, he would join the Black Ops, the Anbu, where he would work in secret, protecting the village and giving it prosperity and wealth. And he would actually basically lead the entire organization up until Danzo took power, however that would still take a while. So for now, Naruto worked hand in hand with Hashirama to protect the village, almost as a shadow Hokage, which was the role that Madara could have had. Naruto became incredibly strong, perhaps even stronger than Hashirama himself. However, he didn't seem to age whatsoever, and he still had a look of a 12 to 15 year old boy. No one knew exactly why, however not many people interacted with him anyways, except for work, slash his shinobi duties. The only per people he really had conversations with outside of shinobi was Hashirama, the whole Senju family, Miko, sorry Mito, and those of course. At one point, Hashirama took Naruto in, almost as his own child because Naruto was, at least a little bit, younger than Hashirama. Though, technically, he was still pretty old. But Naruto accepted, and with that, Naruto lived with Mito and Hashirama for quite some time, up until Hashirama passed. At that point, the house did belong to Naruto, though he did mostly live with Tobirama. 
because Tobirama was, to some extent, his uncle, but at the same time, kind of more of his cousin. They had very similar ideals, though of course not with the Uchiha thing, which is where Naruto would try to help Tobirama lead the village into the right direction and not into a civil war. Which is why the whole Uchiha thing, instead of going berserk, it kind of died down with Naruto's help and an agreement was struck. By the way, I know I kind of skipped over it, but Naruto does have dojutsu since he is basically an Otsutsuki. So he definitely has the Byakugan, which is like the standard Otsutsuki dojutsu. But he has a more pure version, a stronger version you could say, with more reach, distance, and just stronger abilities. So he's basically, if he was one, he would be the strongest Hyuga to be alive, which is quite a feat on its own. Then he also has, of course, the three Tomoe Sharingan. However, not the, he, he does have the Mangekyo, but only when he found out that Hashirama passed away. So yeah and of course he won't turn blind because he's a Natsutsuki so he basically has the e EMS um and he can turn them on one at a time he can even have like one normal eye and one Byakugan or one normal eye and one Sharingan so he can completely control how his eyes look and actually are but the Renegon doesn't quite have yet, though he can feel that he is about to unlock something new, something different. Now, Tobirama was on a mission with his Genin team, however, they had already grown up quite a bit, especially Hiruzen, who was pretty much a candidate for being the third Okage, though that would still take a while, at least that's what everyone thought. And the reason why Naruto didn't go along on his mission was because, again, he's an Anbu, he works in his shadows. He doesn't show himself to everybody, he's almost like an assassin. However, all of the high-ranking people, such as the elders, perhaps Jonin, maybe some experienced Chunin, know of his achievements, feats, and strength. Of course, all the Anbu do too. However, it had been longer than expected, which is why Naruto got a little bit suspicious when suddenly he got a knock on his door. It was Hiruzen, along with the village elders, who were about Hiruzen's age. Of course, at the time, they weren't the village elders, they were just Hiruzen's teammates. They were standing in front of him, seeming like they wanted to tell him something, which they probably did since their sensei, the second of Kage, wasn't with them, which didn't quite make sense. Why would their sensei not come to his own house? Something was going on, and the expression of their faces said everything. They didn't even have to say anything. Naruto understood what had happened. Tobirama Senju had fallen in battle. This was a tragic blow to the village. And with that, Hiruzen was appointed to become the third Okage by Tobirama himself. It was his last words. However, Danzo was not happy with that which is why he would try to gain power in other means, which is why he turned to the Anbu and created his own force, very similar to the Black Ops, which he then named the Foundation. And for now, Naruto didn't worry about it, though it could lead to trouble soon. For now, everything would go as normal, though Naruto would be almost depressed and whilst he was at his very lowest point whilst looking into his mirror his eyes 
which he was unable to control, which had already been turned into the Mangekyo out of pure rage and sadness that he couldn't help. He felt like it was his fault. So he started spinning, turning into lines, into a grayish color, almost purplish. They became the Renegon. However, it would not stop there. It would continue spinning, faster and faster and faster, and at some point, dots, splats of ink, is what it looked like, turned into Tomoe, for he had obtained the rainy Sharingan, arguably one of the most strongest and overpowered jutsu, sorry, dojutsu, to exist. After that, he fainted. We skip a few years where Naruto continued his Anbu duties. Nothing out of the ordinary happened, until the night of the Nine Tails attack. Of course, at this point, Naruto and Minato had become rather good friends, and Naruto sadly also had to say goodbye to Mito, the last remaining senju that he knew. Though of course, he did know of Tsunade, however she had left long ago. And now, the Nine Tails attack would pursue, where one of his best friends, Minato, would be in big trouble. However, Naruto arrived too late. Minato had already performed a seal, though it wasn't yet the Reaper Death Seal, for Naruto did not want Minato to do the Reaper Death Seal, which is why Naruto, with the help of his Renegon, absorbed Kurama by first hypnotizing him and then basically making him go inside of Naruto if he wanted to or not. The entirety of Kurama, except for a tiny bit, which would then be transported into Kushina. The rest would all go into Naruto. So, Minato, though very exhausted, would survive that night, along with Kushina, who was on the brink of death, as well as their daughter, their newborn, who would still, of course, survive without the Nine Tails. Naruto would take care of them in the shadows. Of course, being a good Anbu for Minato's wife and kid. And, of course, he had a few interactions with Kurama, who he didn't want to hypnotize and brainwash 24-7 which is why sometimes they even spoke to each other and Kurama felt a certain amount of similarity to his father Hagoromo in Naruto since Naruto did possess some of Hagoromo's chakra as well as of course Hagoromo's descendants and brother which is why Kurama was actually fine being sealed inside of Naruto and there we'd enjoy living for the next few years. However, finally, when it was time for Minato's daughter, as well as some other important people for the next generation of the Leaf Village, such as Sasuke Uchiha, who had the potential of becoming the next Uchiha leader, though it could have already very well become his brother, since Naruto had also become good friends with Itachi and Shisui, fellow Anbus, and the three of them were known to be the best of the best. Incredibly fast, with incredible dojutsu. However, Naruto only showed his Sharingan, not the rest, since that was only for himself, and in very dire situations. Anyways, 
Also, people like the heir to the Yamanaka clan, Nara clan, and the Hyuga clan would all be joining the academy that year, which is why cultivating that new generation would perhaps be the most important thing that Naruto has done in his life so far. So he joined them in the academy. Of course, Iruka didn't know who Naruto was since he was a pretty inexperienced junior. So he treated him like any other student. And nobody at the academy actually knew who Naruto was. However, Naruto would soon be shown to be the strongest there is in the entire world. At least that's what it seemed like. Whilst Kiba was being loud and screaming at Sasuke for getting all the girls. Of course, Sakura and Ino were mad at Kiba because he was jealous. However, since Naruto was too old and annoyed for these childish games of theirs, he went up and karate chopped Kiba's neck, knocking him out instantly. Though of course, without any pain. And there wouldn't be an injury after that. He would just be knocked out by hitting a chakra point with his Byakugan, who would have only been activated for a millisecond. The Chunin in the room were extremely surprised and would be careful of Naruto from that day on, though they didn't know exactly what happened and did report it to Hiruzen and Minato, they, they already figured. However, they still s seemed surprised just to keep up the act, since they didn't want everybody knowing how strong Naruto is. At least not until Naruto himself was comfortable telling everyone. Since Naruto wanted to deliver in the shadows, he wanted to stay hidden. That was his steal. Sorry, his style. Anyways, Naruto's clothes and look was very similar to Indra. However, it also had a little bit of Hagoromo, Hamra, and Ashra, of course, mixed in. He had a robe with Tomi in it. Though, usually that's what he wore for the Anbu. For school, he wore more basic stuff. Kind of like Sasuke, though more of a blackish color with some ninja tape. Of course, nothing like a headband or anything, but he did have a cape, though he barely wore it to the academy. He used that more for missions to stay hidden. However, he did have a small sword, similar to Shisui, which he was able to use lightning chakra and fire and wind before. Naruto would also have the Chidori and Rasengan, as well as elemental Rasengan, such as the Rasen Shurika, for he was the one who helped Minato even make the Rasengan. And since Minato survived, he would evolve it further on past his normal death. Naruto would go on to become good friends with Sasuke, as well as Shikamaru. And one day, Sasuke invited Naruto over, where Fugaku would greet Naruto in a very official way, because you didn't actually know that Naruto was coming over. So, whilst he bowed to Naruto, Naruto just answered with, Shh, not here, he whispered, because he didn't want Sasuke to figure it out. He just wanted to become normal friends for once in his life, since Naruto never really had a normal childhood. It was just surviving, and then when his childhood was over, he just became an adult. So he just wanted to experience academy life as a normal student. Which is why he didn't tell anybody. And I mean, that would just tarnish his whole mission. Since his mission was 
to make the new generation stronger and more knowledgeable. And telling everybody how strong Naruto is could discourage them. Anyways, Itachi and Shisui also came over to Fugaku's house. Of course, Itachi lived there, but Shisui also came over. And Tachi and Shisui did also not know that Naruto was coming over, which is why they were pretty surprised. Though didn't greet him quite in such an official manner, and didn't really bow to him, as they saw him more as of a friend and partner, teammate, rather than a village official. After the dinner, Fugaku, Shisui, and Itachi asked Naruto as many questions as possible, since they weren't aware that he was in the academy. Of course, this was while Sasuke couldn't hear or see what they were doing. Naruto answered that he tried to cultivate the new generation, which kind of made sense, since no one really knew he, who he was, though he could hold his own and was very knowledgeable since he was as old as Hashirama himself, almost at least. And it is kind of funny because what the students had in history class was literally Naruto's life and childhood, which was a little bit boring though also nostalgic for him, but it also made him sad looking back at the times he had with Hashirama, Madara, Tobirama, and all of his pasts, and all of his past mates. After that night, Naruto went on to complete the normal four years of the academy life, along with, of course, the new and perhaps most important generation of shinobi to ever exist, for they had most of the clan leader's children all in one class which was going to be crucial for the Konoha in the future. It was finally time for the entire class to prove if they're able to become Genin and prove once and for all what they have learned and if they're ready to officially become Shinobi. Naruto first did the test and of course he passed with clan colors after him, of course, many followed, such as Sasuke, Sakurai, Ino, Shikamaru, and all of those we love and know. And then, Minato's daughter, Sarui, also did the exam. Yes, that's the name I'm giving her for the series. I hope you like it. And I know at this point, some of you will be wondering, well, what happened to the other person? Because, of course, there's four different getting teams, Kono 12, so if the new character is added, what happens to one of them? Well, I'm gonna substitute in Sakura with Sarui, because I'm gonna make Sarui, or at least try to, make her the better version of what Sakura could have become. She also has reddish hair with a little taint of yellow in it from Kushina and Minato. But instead of fanboying over Sasuke or Naruto like most other girls in their classes, she actually has a crush on somebody who she's been training with. But she only knows him as an Anbu because Minato wanted someone to train her daughter, sorry, his daughter, someone who's not someone she knows personally. And to keep it a secret who that person is, they made it an Anbu, and that Anbu was to never reveal their secret. And she developed a crush on him, because she knows for a fact that that Anbu is not that much older than her. Still a child, if you will. Anyways, let's continue with the getting exams. Of course here, the normal 12 people pass, and then the Genin teams are announced the next day, where the Genin leaders will of course pick up their students. Disclaimer though on the Genin teams, in this story I want to change it up a little bit and make something different. So I decided that the Genin teams are going to be 6. So 
what I mean with that is not six different teams, but each Genin team is going to have six people in it. And the reason for that is because Minato, along with the village elders, decided that instead of having the normal three group teams, they want to change it up a little bit. Try bigger teams so perhaps there is more chance for teamwork and also they could do bigger missions earlier on which could benefit the village more than you believe. And of course with such big teams there's also three teachers for each team. And well three teachers, sensei, higher level shinobi, whatever you want to say, right? But there's three guardians, I guess you could say. And for one team, which is the first team I'm gonna say, is Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, of course, Inoshi could show, Sasuke, Sarui, and Hinata. However, since 13 people passed the exam this year, they kind of had to change it up a little bit and put Naruto in there for good measure. And the reason that Naruto was put in this team is because, as you can probably guess, all of the, well, sons and daughters of the clan leaders are in this team. Hinata Hyuga, Sasuke Uchiha, and of course, Inoshi Kucho, we all know and love. And Saruri kind of counts not just as the Hokage's kid, but also for the as the last remaining Namikaze, of course, except for Minato, and the last remaining Uzumaki, at least that they know of. Of course, they don't know people like Nagato or Kari, at least not yet. So Naruto is on this team, and this time, they're the ones who are picked up first by Itachi, Shisui, who are both now not quite abandoning, but taking a back foot on their Anbu duties by ask of Minato who knows that they're extremely capable and if something happens that is not planned they can step in and of course Naruto's there if something really bad happens and the third one I think we all know and love Kakashi Hatake and of course, they don't come late because Shisui and Itachi went to Kakashi because they knew he was going to be late, so they took him with him. Sorry, they took him with them to go to the academy as the first senseis. They pick up the whole team and then go to the roof. They didn't even, or they barely even looked at the students. They just said, come to the roof, we'll meet there and left the classroom in a flash. However, when they arrived at the roof, Naruto was already there. Kaka Kakashi was speechless. He'd seen Naruto only a few times before, but he knew how much of a menace Naruto truly was. He was strong, powerful, knowledgeable, and had a high position in the Konoha loop village even though not many people knew about it he had good relations with almost everybody except of course with some neighboring villages but let's not talk about that now point is naruto's feared and respected not just by village elders but even by jonin who know him once they meet at the roof they explain exactly what the teams are meant to be this year which means that if the teams don't work out, they explain that, especially for smaller missions, they can always split up the teams into two teams of three, how it would normally be. And when asked the question of where would Naruto go, since they're an odd number of people, Naruto would be placed in a team that needs the most help. So basically, Naruto would just be another sensei on the mission to supervise them. Then they start introducing themselves. First, Itachi starts. And of course, 
by this point, Sasuke and Naruto, sorry, Sasuke and Itachi have made eye contact because Itachi didn't even tell Sasuke before today that he was going to be a sensei because of course they knew, well Itachi knew, but he didn't want to tell Sasuke before this big surprise. They had a good relationship and of course they had to make jokes and surprises all the time to keep it funny but chill. So Itachi says, well, my name is Itachi Uchiha. I love cooking, caring for my family, and I've been a ninja for quite a while now. I served in the Anbu, and now I'm new to being a sensei. It's nice to meet you guys. Then she looks at Shisui, and he goes, Well, I'm basically the same as Itachi. I work with him in the Anbu, and I'm new to being a sensei. I hope you guys enjoy the time with us. Then Kakashi has to go, but since he's still pretty sleepy, since Kakashi slept until about 30 minutes before they came into the classroom, he just says, Hi, I'm Hatake Kakashi, nice to meet you. And the reason that he at least gives an effort is not only because, well, Naruto, Itachi, and Shisui are there, but because, uh, yeah kind of important people and you know Minato personally wanted Kakashi to take this role so it is important to him as well and then the newly formed Genin team starts introducing themselves first of course Sarui she says my name is Sarui Namikaze Uzumaki though you can just call me Sarui I'm looking forward to working with you guys, and I want to become the first and strongest female Hokage to ever exist. Believe it! Then it goes over to Hinata, who just says, um, My name is Hinata, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys. And Sasuke says he wants to become just like his older brother, which makes Itachi blush. <clears throat> um, and then he says that he wants to become the strongest Genin to ever exist and quickly move up the ranks. Then it goes over to Naruto. Naruto says, my name is Naruto Otsutsuki, and... I wish everybody good luck. Then, of course, it goes over to Ino Shikacho. First, with Ino. She says, My name is Ino Yamanaka, and I'm looking to work with you all. And I want to train my Genjutsu abilities. Then, Shikamaru says, I'm really not looking forward to this. It's gonna be really annoying. But anyways, my name is Shikomaru, that's all you need to know. Then Choji says, Hello, my name is Choji. I love eating chips, and I'm happy to be here. And with that, all the introductions are finished. Then Kakashi introduces the idea of the bell test to the ending team, explaining that this is going to be their last test to truly explain and show their powers to their new um, sensei and to prove that they're worthy of becoming Genin. Everybody's bummed out at the idea of another test but of course Naruto already knows what this is going to be since he's himself made many of the bell tests and was even one of the people that came up with the idea. So they're told not to eat but of course, Naruto doesn't listen, because he won't vomit, no matter what happens. They start the test, and of course, the senseis aren't out late. They are 5 minutes later than they said they'd be, but not that late. Especially comparing to Kakashi and Canon, it's really not that late. The senseis explain the test in more detail, and then they start. 
all the Genin start rushing in, though after failing the first time, Kurui, Ino, Shikamaru, as well as some others, try to come up with an idea. And then Shikamaru finally says, we should work as a team. Everybody retreat. We'll think of a plan and then get him afterwards. We still have time since they would be given time until the end of the day. By the way, I didn't explain this, but since there's three sensei and seven students, they've been told that every sensei has two bells. So Tachi, Shishi, and Kakashi each have two bells. And the last one is, well, the last person who doesn't have a bell will be the one kicked out of the team. But Naruto neither attacked nor retreated to make a plan since realistically if that's what it was about he could take the belts at any point in time but he knows it's teamwork so he doesn't really care about the test because if it really comes down to it in the last five minutes he can just tell everybody what to do and they'll pass anyways so he's leaning against the tree just to watch what the newly found Genins will do. They make, a they make a plan with Shikamaru and Ino's help, and with that, they try to overcome one sensei at a time, since Shisui and Itachi, as well as Kakashi, spread out, each one about 100 meters away from each other, exactly for these kinds of plans, where the students have as much chances as possible, as much shots at teamwork as possible so first all of them would go on to itachi and although sasuke knew that itachi would be strong he did think that they could have a chance at beating itachi and actually getting his belt so they tried their best shikamaru using his shadows Yak yamanaka sorry you know trying to use her mind control tricks and so on and so forth. Of course, they didn't manage to, and Itachi did go easy on them. He wasn't so brutal as Kakashi to use stuff like Genjutsu that would scar them, but he didn't go too easy as if they were training. He did want to at least try to put the idea in their head that this is serious. So after failing continuously, Naruto went over to Shisui with open arms. So, how long do you think they'll take? He asked. Um, I think they'll pass in about the next 10 minutes. It could be right now with your help, Shisui responded. Yeah, but I don't really want to. And I mean, it is their test anyways, so... I guess you're right, Shisu responded. After that, Naruto goes back to his tree, waiting for the Genin to make their move. Then they retreat once more, going over to Naruto since they do know that he's pretty strong, at least as strong as Sasuke, and ask him why he's not participating and that with him they could have perhaps even beat Itachi. Naruto tells him that that's an unrealistic goal and gives them the tip that they've basically already passed since they've worked in a team because the actual objective isn't to get the bells. The only reason Naruto told them is because there's ramen, there's a discount today, and that's all Naruto wanted. And he didn't want to get home too late, so he kind of wanted to finish this test pretty early. So Naruto went up and at least gave the impression that he was trying, throwing one or two shuriken and kunai, though not even aiming correctly. They pass, and all three sensei are happy. Naruto goes, eats his ramen, and is over the moon. For Ichiraku ramen, is still his favorite after almost a hundred years and three generations of ramen makers. After this, the newly found Team 7, and whilst there isn't actually 7 teams, 
it is still gonna be Call of Team 7, mostly for my nostalgia, but it's easier, and you know, Team 7 has been the legendary teams for generation. I mean, first it was Hashirama's team, then, you know, Hiruzen, then Jiraiya, Minato, and now Kakashi's. So it just makes sense for it to be called Team 7. So Team 7 does a whole bunch of D rank missions. When I say a lot, I mean like literally every single D rank mission there is in the village, except for a few for the other Ganyu to do. So yeah, they do about 300 D rank missions in the matter of two weeks with about a hundred of them being from Naruto alone and of course the other ones were done still with relatively good speed but of course not quite as fast as Naruto then a little bit earlier than in the normal series they get offered with Minato coming at them the sea ranked mission the land of waves the first mission that could actually become challenging for the team. But Itachi and Shisui, as well as Kakashi and Naruto, all prepared for anything to come at them. Now, they all start their mission on the next day, and they start their journey. First, they have to travel quite a long while, with Tazuna, of course, in the middle, and everybody else surrounding them, with the three senseis walking in the back and the front. So Kakashi is walking in the front, and Itachi and Shisui are walking in the back. Sasuke tries to start a conversation with Itachi, however, at the same time, two shinobi start jumping out of the bush in front of them, and suddenly Naruto pulls for a kunai and chops off four limbs. So this is the logo graphic. They all fall to the ground, and then Naruto starts asking important questions, like who are they, who sent them there, and what are their intentions. So of course from Naruto's instincts as a shinobi and Anbu, who, which have been hailed for many, many years. Tachi and Shisui immediately teleport over to Naruto and tell him to not do this now, since they're in front of, well, kids, newly formed Geni. That could really put some trauma on them. And also, I don't want to put a bad name on Naruto. Naruto wants to become their friend, and stay their friend, not their enemy or rival. Although he does want to guide them to become stronger. However, here, his instincts took control of him. He didn't know what he was doing. It just happened. Naruto puts a genjutsu on himself and the demon brothers, and then heals all of them back for them to be questioned. However, Itachi and Shisui take over the questioning part, and Naruto puts a genjutsu on everybody, except for of course the senseis, to make them think that Kakashi defeated the two shinobi brothers. So, yeah. They never know, and might not ever realize that Naruto was the one who took care of them. So after being questioned a little bit, they got enough information to carry on. The two demon brothers were left there, and Team 7 moved on towards the village. On the last stretch, Zabuza, the demon, came out with his ginormous sword, which he had thrown at Team 7. Naruto, instead of dodging like everybody else, catches it with one hand, then destroys it with his own grip. Everyone is shocked, but Naruto has no patience here. He has heard a lot of stories about Zabuza, who had betrayed his own village and become a rogue ninja. And now, it was time to stop him from hurting anybody else. Naruto, however, wanted to do this tactically, so instead of immediately running towards Zawaza, he first shouted, Come out, come out, wherever you are. Naruto could sense another shinobi hiding in the trees behind them. And here, 
another boy came out. His name was Haku. Yes, guys, it's still a boy, okay? I'm not gonna do any of the Haku or Naruto ships, alright? It's not gonna happen, alright? Not gonna happen. Sorry. Anyways, Haku comes out and says, I'm pretty surprised that you could sense me. But I have heard that there's some interesting people in Konoha. I'm guessing you're one of them. No matter. We'll defeat you anyways. Zabuza immediately went for water style jutsu, and Kakashi started copying from the back. However, Naruto wasn't waiting for them to finish their jutsu, and immediately went for Haku to take him as a hostage, or if push come to shove, destroy them both immediately. Naruto was fast like no one else. Faster than Shisui, Itachi, and Kakashi even combined. He could probably rival even Minato's speed. Perhaps he was even faster. He was truly at the pinnacle of speed. Naruto teleported over to Haku. Had a kunai by his throat. And then did not want to play any games. He threatened Haku's wife. And then... Zabuza stopped with his jutsu. Kakashi did so too, since he knew that this fight was already over before it even started. Everyone laid their weapons down now, except for Naruto of course, who was still threatening Haku with his kunai in his hands. Zabuza tried to negotiate now, saying that he'll surrender completely. However, Naruto didn't buy it, and right before he was actually going to slit Haku's wrist, sorry, throat, Itachi and Shisui stopped him. Of course, if Naruto truly wanted to, he could still do it, but he really didn't want to kill anybody. So they had an agreement. For now, Zabuza and Haku would stop following them and try not to hurt them. They'd just stay there, perhaps even protect the village and the bridge until further negotiations were made. For now, the mission carried on as it was supposed to. Everyone a little bit feared of Naruto since this time, he didn't make them forget their memories or alter their memories. They kept them and therefore they were cautious of Naruto. They knew he was strong though, not quite this strong and he was a little bit scary too. The girls of the team really did like Naruto, but now they were a little bit shocked, intimidated even, by Naruto. After a little while, they arrived at Tazuna's house. It was already the evening, since they had taken longer than they should have. So, they all went to bed after eating dinner. All the senseis in one room, and the students in the other. Of course, the room was split in girls and boys side. However, the only one not sleeping was Naruto. He was outside in the direction of the forest, watching the birds, the moon, and being attentive to his surroundings. He told himself that he was looking for trouble. Well, watching, I guess. He was being attentive, so no one else would get jumped during the night, but realistically, he just couldn't sleep. He didn't want to sleep. He was never able to sleep. You see, Naruto, since he is basically an Atsutsuki, doesn't need to sleep. Well, at least not as much as humans. Realistically, he could sleep like once a year and he'd be fine. So he rarely does sleep, but then Itachi came out. He saw Naruto, as always, not sleeping. They had a pretty close connection and hence why Itachi knew a lot of things about Naruto that a lot of people don't, but 
They weren't close enough for Naruto to tell him everything. Well, everything in as his personal feelings about things. So they talked for hours on end until morning broke. Tachi wasn't really tired either since she was used to not getting that much sleep because of his Anbu duties. But he was of course more tired than Naruto since Naruto could do missions for days without sleeping and wouldn't even be tired or break a sweat. And Itachi didn't quite have that ability, but he was still more tired than everybody else. So they split into two groups, Kakashi and Shisui were gonna be training four of the Genins, which would be Ino Shikacho, so Ino Shikamaru Shoji, um, as well as Hinata, and then Naruto, Sasuke, and Saruri, along with Itachi, would be going to well, guard the bridge. This was because, of course, they didn't need everybody to be guarding the bridge, but the next day they would switch. So they kept on doing that till the bridge was built in about eight days. So everybody had four days of training and four days of guarding the bridge. Of course, they also helped build the bridge since there wasn't much guarding they needed to do. Shoji, for example, was good at lifting heavy weights. Shikamaru could do the same with his shadows and so on. Naruto didn't really bother training and he barely did anything at the bridge either. He was almost a shell of a person. Didn't talk much, didn't do much, but he was there nonetheless. Until the last day where the mafiosos came when the bridge was almost done. Basically, it was done. The very last moment, the mafiosos came. So now we have Naruto, Itachi, Sasuke, and Saruri opposing Gato and his men. Of course, Zabuza isn't there with them, as well as Haku. They're hanging around the village, you could say. Not really fighting anyone, just being there till further notice is given by Naruto and the other sensei, of course. So now, they all know that something is about to happen. Gato does not look happy, since he was expecting Zabura, Zabuza to take care of the situation, though he was apparently defeated by unexpected amounts of Jonin, since Itachi and Shisui have a reputation, and Kakashi alone could have perhaps defeated Zabuza, though of course not with Haku's help. But then add Itachi and Shisui? Gato didn't know what to do. They were some of the most powerful people from Konoha, perhaps even all villages. Some even compared them to Kage's. That's how powerful they were. Though Gato hired the strongest men in the areas, and therefore he thought he could at least try to intimidate them. He had a chance, perhaps. So now Gato, with about a hundred of the strongest bandits, shinobis, and martial artists of the area, were now facing Tachi, Sasuke, Sarui, and Naruto. Dragato, Dragato gave his whole speech about wanting to control the land and how his, this bridge was going to be an issue. Immediately, half of Gato's men fell. Suddenly, they all had marks on their legs. Their legs weren't cut off, but the kunai seemed to be split, seemed to be slit against all the legs. Therefore, Naruto seemed to kind of vibrate, and more and more people fell on the enemy team. 
Naruto was so fast that he didn't look like he was moving at all, but he was casually defeating everybody on the enemy team. And now only Gato was standing. By the way, I just want to say, Naruto did not kill any of the men. He just injured them or knocked them out. Anyways, now it was just Gato standing. And here he used his secret technique, which was run away and let his strongest men handle the situation. He had hired five more people who truly were strong. These were like Joni level fighters. He had bet all of his money on them. They were the ones to be able to defeat the Konoha team. And they tried indeed, charging towards Naruto and the rest of his team, well, the rest of Team 7. However, one after another, they were taken out by Itachi and Naruto working together. However, it was mostly Naruto's doing. And by the time they were finished, was, was, which was only about 10 seconds later, Gato was already on a boat trying to escape since he knew he had no chance left of winning. However, Naruto was not going to let that happen. So without any hand signs, two ginormous waves, a little smaller than the size of the bridge, came from each side of the river and swallowed Gato's whole, whole boat and Gato with it. Therefore, there was no sign left of him, and all the mercenaries that Gato had hired were going to have a full recovery in a few days. However, they, their, their memories were changed, and they had all imagined now, and their, their memories were as if they had all had a deal with someone from the Leaf that they didn't recognize to stop doing this kind of work, stop being such bad people. Oh no, they had some talk no jutsu whilst they were asleep, and it helped at least a lot of them. Perhaps not all of them, but most of them. And with that, Team 7 said goodbye to Tazma, all the builders who had now finished the bridge. They called it Naruto Bridge due to Naruto's incredible efforts in defeating Zabuza, Haku, and Gato's men. And right before they left, Zabuza and Haku asked what they should do now. Naruto had kind of forgotten about them, and he said, Okay, well, you two are pretty strong, especially you, Zabuza. And Haku could perhaps be helpful in at least some form of medical ninjutsu, since you do have a lot of knowledge about it. So how about you guys come with us to Konoha? Immediately, Kakashi looked at Naruto in a weird way. And then he whispered in his ear, Can we really trust them? Kakashi said. Naruto said, Yeah, of course we can trust them. I sense no ill intent in them. Come on, let's all go back to the village. And with that, they were on their way to go back to Konoha. And there, they were soon, not quite yet immediately, but soon, they were gonna start the Genin exams. Sorry, the Chunin exams. And this is going to be the last part. I hope you enjoyed the series. I know it wasn't too long, but I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. And let's get into it the final part so first i'm going to explain something about naruto's life and life in the anbu and that is that naruto of course as well as some others has been keeping tabs on all the let's say rogue ninja groups which does include the akatsuki now he hasn't done anything yet to them because the Akatsuki haven't done anything noteworthy, at least not to his knowledge, because he doesn't know that Obito 
on the Knight of Ninetales was part of the Akatsuki, else he would have at least tried to eliminate them beforehand. But he doesn't know of anything bad that they've done. And by the way, I'm not speaking about like the individuals, because I mean the individuals are kind of bad, but the group itself hasn't done anything bad, so there's no reason for Naruto to, to attack them. But now they're slowly preparing to what seems like a battle. At least that's what Spy's intel has been telling them. Which is making everyone a little uneasy in the village. But anyways, for now, Naruto and the Drastic Team 7 prepare for the tuning exams. Which, okay, so here this is gonna be a little bit different. So, because Team 7 has 7 members in it, they're gonna split the team in two. Naruto is not allowed to participate for obvious reasons here. Not only is he already a Chunin, and much higher of course, he's basically Hokage rank, he's a Shadow, he's a Shadow Hokage, and basically the leader of the Anbu. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's way too strong, like, way too strong. Basically the strongest person in the village, so there's no real competition for him, and it'd just be kind of mean to the others. So, they decided to take Naruto out of the team, at least for the Shunin exams, and then split the team in half. So it's going to be a group of three and a group of three. Of course, the senseis don't need to split up since that's not necessary. And now the teams go in like normal, just that there's one extra team, which is team seven, but split in two. Funny exams go as normal. Well, without Naruto, that is. All the people that we love and care pass the first exam. The second one was much more difficulty, but they do pass after a day because they're much stronger than the original Team 7 in canon. And Archimaru doesn't do any of his shenanigans because he knows of Naruto's might and is scared of him more than he was scared or would be scared of Minato in the canon story. So he ain't pulling nothing. However, Naruto has felt something weird lately around the village and they'll prove to be a very very bad thing but for now team seven well, both of team seven have passed the first two exams and now since there is too many people they have to do preliminary rounds first and those go as normal and i'm gonna be honest with you team seven will just fight no name ninjas because i don't really mind um yeah <laughs> anyways so they're now having one month period to train and this is to prepare for the finals of course here everyone trains with certain people sasuke wants to train with itachi which of course they will this time not with kakashi because you know but so yeah Sasuke will train for, with Itachi to master his Sharingan and the, the Chidori he can learn later because he hasn't really seen the Chidori from Kakashi because there was just no need to, for Kakashi to use it. Um, Ino, Shikasho are just gonna, I don't know, train with other people probably from each of their clan, you know, Shikamaru with his dad, Shoji with his dad, and Ino, you know, probably with her dad too. Uh, Suri is gonna train with Minato and Kushino, which is pretty obvious. Sorry, not Kushino, just Minato. Uh, and Hinata is gonna train with her clan, but also with, Ita uh, with Shisui, Shin since she wanted to learn something new, something different, you know, that something that doesn't really fit the her, her clan style. But she just wanted to stick out, be unique, not in line like everybody else. She wanted to have something different about her. So 
if you want her to up her speed, precision, and just all around ninja skills with Shisui, and he was the perfect man for that. So they didn't. All of them went on training. Of course, Naruto didn't need any training and didn't want any training. He protected the village, as we know. So now, finally, the finals. Finally, the finals, yes. So the finals arrive, and they happen. First few rounds go as normal. Sasuke isn't late this time because Itachi does not want to be late. And is never late due to his incredible speed and, you know, not being Kakashi. Anyways, that goes on. The Gara fight is at the beginning this time. But before Gara is able to, you know, transform into Shikaku the One Tails and try to destroy the village, uh, Naruto is able to teleport down and stop him immediately without even trying. And of course, Kurama the Nine Tails reacts to Shikaku, but Naruto does not let anything happen there and shuts both of them down immediately. So then everyone can continue the rounds. But then what finally, in the final match of the first round of the finals, so the final match of the first bracket, suddenly explosions can be heard all around the village from every direction imaginable. As we later find out, these are bombs set by Daedara from the stone village. This is the sensation that Naruto has been feeling. However, on this day specifically, he wasn't paying much attention to it since not only hasn't anything happened lately, well, for the past month that he's been feeling this, but also he just wanted to have fun and watch everybody, all of his teammates, fight. But that backfired completely. As soon as he heard those explosions, he teleported all around the village trying to get an estimation of casualties, explosion damage, size of explosions, and who could have made these. Due to his incredible reflexes and mastermind and wanting to collect info and intel. He has a lot of experience with stuff like this, though he wasn't expecting something like this to happen today. But he did and found out that these were likely set by someone from the Akatsuki. And of course, since he did have intel on the Akatsuki, he knew that Whilst he didn't know the exact person, he knew it wasn't some of the people. For example, it wasn't the shark dude, which he forgot the name of because he didn't really care, and so on. By the way, just a reminder, Itachi is not in the Akatsuki, right? Because the whole Uchiha massacre never happened. And of course, he doesn't know that Tobi slash Obito is in the Akatsuki, so... That just goes out the window. Sasori is not with Data at this time. Actually, it's Pain himself, since this was a big mission. They wouldn't let, you know, weaker people of the Akatsuki handle this. And whilst Data isn't the strongest, he got he he has a lot of, let's say, explosive force. He's perfect to handle a village, if you know what I mean. Especially flying around. Now, the only reason he can fly is of course with Pain holding him up. And the reason Pain didn't yet do a, you know, almighty push is because, well, it's just not necessary to. That's kind of his last resort. As we saw in canon, he was completely exhausted afterwards, so he doesn't really feel the need to just yet, though it might come to that later, who knows. As soon as Naruto sees what looks like a speck in the air from down there, Naruto immediately jumps up, and without any special jutsu or force, with a single jump, he's on eye level with Pain himself. They face each other off. And Naruto can tell that this is one of Jiraiya the Gallant's earlier students that he's heard many things about. Jiraiya was in the village, of course, because of the Chunin exams, 
and you know Minato asking him to because perhaps he could train Minato's daughter or somebody else who he finds fit just anybody really I mean Jiraiya hasn't been doing much in the past years if you know what I mean except of course research because of the Chunin exams and you know Minato asking him to because perhaps he could train Minato's daughter or somebody else who he finds fit just anybody really I mean Jiraiya hasn't been doing much in the past years if you know what I mean except of course research anyways we cut back to Naruto and Pain facing each other off in here and whilst Naruto is now falling to the ground he immediately makes thousands of shadow clones who all distribute around the entire village in an instant each one of them preparing for a fight the fight of their lives to protect the village from perhaps the most dangerous threat on the planet at current time the reason why Naruto is taking this battle so seriously is because as soon as he jumped up he saw what looked like his Renegon but of course without the Tomoe in it in Pain's eyes and he also felt another presence not quite like Pain's but pretty similar by the way right now Pain well Naruto is has only seen one body of Pain not all of them combined so he thinks there's only one enemy but he has also felt that something is controlling Pain that's not really the true leader of the Akatsuki, at least not the mastermind behind it. So Naruto jumps up once more and starts throwing hands with pain, at least what seems like pain. And here they're fighting pretty equally though Naruto is not trying his best just yet since he is using a lot of his power to control his shadow clones and for them to start carrying out his master plan. He's been preparing for this for quite a while and has been making plans to protect the whole village at a wider scale since he knew that something was coming he was just not sure what exactly or when but now that he's thinking about it it makes sense that it was today everyone had their guards down except for the people in the walls but if there was already people inside the walls there was no use so they continue fighting Daedra though now stopped throwing the bombs or explosions all around the village since he saw a few shadow clones heading towards him of course others were heading outside the village looking for the true mastermind behind this pain character and they tried looking all around of course the original naruto the true naruto kept sending information to all of them about updates to the plan where the true pain might be and such Anyways, their fight ensued, and Daedra started losing, since he wasn't an expert fighter, at least not in close range. He was more of a tactician, but without the tactic, without the tactics, if you know what I mean. And Pain, well, he had to call his, let's say, backup Pains. And here, there were truly the six paths of Pain. Although now, Pain started to think about actually using Shinra Tensei since he was being pushed into a corner more than he expected. He'd heard of a strong ninja in Konoha, but not this strong. I mean, this was a Hokage level fighter, perhaps even more. This was a fight that even the whole Akatsuki could perhaps not even win combined. Which is why more of the Akatsuki were called for backup, though it might till it might still take a while for them to arrive. Anyways, Daedra was now captured since other Jonin and Anbu were called for the rescue. Especially people like Itachi and Shisui, who are fast and powerful with her uh with her Keke Genka as well who apprehended Daedra and started questioning immediately, whilst Naruto 
with her shadow clones were still fighting the pains. And Shisui did go up there to help, though Naruto declined, since this was a fight that he had to do himself. He was preparing for this for a long time. 80 years of training and preparation and tactics to help this village overcome such crises. So now it was his time to shine. And shine he did. Massive explosions and bright lights in the sky as if literal gods were fighting. This was truly the pinnacle of the shinobi world. Evil against good, at least that's what it seemed. The Naruto knew that Pin's intentions weren't truly evil. He sensed at least some form of goodness in him. He didn't do it for any bad reasons. At least that's what the impression gave him. Though the way he did and the way he achieved his goals was not the right one. Perhaps they could help each other out. Though for now, in the midst of a battle, that was very far-fetched. Anyways, by now, Naruto with his Shadow Clones was slowly able to overpower Pain, trying more and more, hardly, using all the tricks in the books, more Jutsus, even starting to use his Sharingan, Byakugan, and for a split second, even his Renegan with Tomo in it. He used Amaterasu and others like it, which completely overpowered Pain, bringing him to his knees. Pain fell down from the sky towards the ground, destroying two buildings when he fell. But now, he was defeated. Pain had no chance. And right before he was put in handcuffs by Naruto himself, all of the Akatsuki arrived and were now standing face to face with Naruto. However, in a split second, without losing his cool, Naruto immediately went in for a fight because he knew that if he wasn't going to, they would definitely do it as well. So they directly started fighting. Sasori didn't have time to react or get his puppets out, so he was already knocked out before this fight even started. However, Shark Dude, as Naruto liked to call him, had incredible chakra and was not going to give up this easily. He wasn't called the tailless tailed beast for no reason. He was truly a monster. And with all Akatsuki fighting Naruto and his Shadow Clones at once, it was truly a difficult battle. However, this is Naruto we're speaking about. A Naruto with the power of Kaguya's descendants. Hagoromo, Hamura, Indra, and Ashura combined. Godlike beings who roamed the Earth once, controlling humans and teaching the entire concept of ninjutsu. There's, there's no way he could lose, even to the pinnacle of what a shinobi truly is. So Naruto, after an hour of fighting, finally won. And the reason it took him so long is because, for his own sake, Naruto wanted to make this whole fight without making a single drop of sweat. And that was truly an achievement for Naruto, because he, there was times where he just wanted to obliterate the Akatsuki, but he wanted to do this for himself to prove that he wasn't a shallow monster just like them. He wanted to prove to himself that he was a calm person, not a shinobi. So now the Akatsuki were defeated. However, Black Zatsu was still in the background, working on a new plan since his first run failed. By the way, Obito was not there, by the way. So he was still back at the Akatsuki hideout since the others didn't see much fit for Toby to help destroy a village, especially Kona. 
However, Naruto, after apprehending all the Akatsuki, directly went to their hideout since he knew where they were hiding. Because now he had enough of it. They invaded his home, Konoha, the Leaf Village. And now, all of them must pay. First, Obito, who is now showing his true colors after being infuriated by the pathetic loss of his teammates and comrades. He just wanted to use them for his master plan, though that completely flew out the window. And Black Zetsu was mad as well, since he had been preparing this for almost a century, first controlling Madara, and so on and so on. And all of that was now wasted, which is why Naruto was now their ultimate enemy. However, before being able to make a new plan, Naruto came directly to them. And, to be fair, they had no chance. Obito tried to put up a good fight, but Black Zetsu couldn't do anything to help, unless try to hide and run away. The Naruto would not let that happen, so after making some Shadow Clones and Wood Clones and anything imaginable, they tracked down Black Zetsu and annihilated him from the face of the earth, and then apprehended Obito as well. So here is where the story kind of ends. Now, of course, things still happen. For example, Naruto doesn't want to become Hokage, though about 10 years later, Sasuke does. Yes, pretty surprising. Sasuke, not Saruri. So Naruto still is a Shadow Hokage, but he doesn't work as much like an Anbu like he used to. Now it's more Sarui and former Team 7, which are working in the shadows. Not quite an Anbu, but leading New Guinea teams and such. What happened to the Akatsuki here, you ask? Well, the ones willing to comply were first held prisoners, and then after a few years, tried to cooperate. And some of them actually succeeded. Kisami, for example, was able to now work with the village. Of course, not completely trusted, at least not everyone. But he was able to be sent on missions, of course, under close watch. Kakuzu was easily swayed by just a little money. And Hidan, as long as he could practice his religion, would not disagree with anything a powerful person like Naruto would say. So, now everything is well. The legacy of Hashirama continued through Naruto and now Team 7. The fifth Hokage was named Sasuke and everything went on well. And here's when I'm gonna leave off the end of the series. I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!